is what Jehovah gives us to um, model our thinking out of. To when we have a decision to make, we read divine principles and we base our decisions off that. Okay. So basically, to sum up, what a regular principle would be is a fundamental truth. Right? It's a truth about something. But when we talk about divine principle, it goes beyond that. And basically, you can say that a divine principle is Jehovah's thoughts. Ooh. Right? And Jehovah's thoughts are more important than laws. Right. But there's one thing that makes them different between laws, which would be that Jehovah's thoughts, are they for a short period of time? They never change. They never change. They last forever, so they're timeless. Mm -hmm. Well, the difference between that and this is that Laws, laws can change. Right. And one example of a law changing is, let's see, on our road here, if they decided that at the corner um, they're going to put in a school, right? The speed limit right now is 35 miles per hour. If they put a school there, the speed limit now has to change. Because there's kids that are going to be there and the speed limit will now drop to 15 or 20. So that law has now changed based on its circumstance, based on the situation. So that's what makes it different. And we know that in Isaiah 48, um, it talks about Jehovah's word lasting forever. And that's how we know that it's, it's timeless. Um, Bible principles, divine principles, are supposed to affect your heart. They're supposed to make you change and make decisions for every single decision that you can in this world. But one of the biggest things that we go into when we talk about divine principle and we talk about laws is, well, how can I remember all Bible principles? Exactly. Right? For every single situation, how am I going to remember that I have to decide I think with that, this? I think that notes would be handy. Okay, but we may not always have notes. Do you remember how many laws were given to the Israelites? Ooh, a bunch. Yeah. 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 Those laws were abolished because that no human could be able to do that. Can there was uh, over 600 laws mm -hmm. that were given to them. Uh. You know what's crazy when we think about Jehovah is his power you know? so the sun just think about this before we even continue the sun produces a hundred thousand hydrogen bombs per second in energy so if you think about a hydrogen bomb there's so much energy in it to take effect a hundred thousand of them and the sun can produce that much energy every second isn't that powerful oh uh, yeah who gave the sun its power. Jehovah. So can he, Jehovah tell he, you, tell your mom, tell me, and make us what to do, do what he wants? Yeah. But he doesn't, right? Yeah. What does he use? He uses divine principles. He uses divine principles. So let's think for one second because um, if we talk about laws right now, when you are above the line of laws, when you are above the line right here, you do a law, you follow a law, and you're above it, you're doing what's required of you. Right? So are you doing what's right? Yeah. Okay, so you're doing what's right. and you're doing what's good. If you don't do what's above the law and you cross the line and you get into this area and you do... What's wrong? What would it be? You would do what's, what's no, wrong. What's bad. What's wrong no, what's and the bad. opposite of good? Bad. Right? So. Why do people do what's above the law? 
Because they like it? No. Because they have to. Because, because they have to or because they know what? That if they cross here, what's going to happen? There's going to be consequences, like jail or right? There's tickets. penalties, right? Mm -hmm. well, yeah. This is how you should it. There's penalties to it. So they avoid going down the line because they don't want to receive a penalty. Is that, is the law affecting their heart or their mind? Their, their mind. mind. Their mind. So there we go back again to divine principle affects your heart. heart. But law affects your mind. So which way do we want to think? Divine principles, which is higher than laws. Yeah. So, but let's go back to that point where you say, well, how can I do that? There's so many principles. How can I live my life and make a decision based on a principle, I can't remember all the principles. Well, the Bible gives us two principles that are called big boy principles. Huh? <laughs> big boy principles. Because they're the biggest? Yeah, and you know who said those big boy principles? Who? Well, who do you think? Moses. No. Jehovah. Who could give? Jesus. Very good. So let's go to Matthew. And we're going to go over those big boy principles just to make the point. Matthew 22, verse 37. So here are the disciples and they say, Teacher, teacher, what, what is the greatest commandment in the law? So what were they thinking? Were they thinking with their heart or were they thinking with... Their mind. Right. So then Jesus not only teaches them about the way they should be thinking, but then sums everything up in two big boy principles. 37 says, He said to him, You must love Jehovah your God with your whole heart and with your whole soul and with your whole mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. The second like, like it is this. You must love your neighbor as you love yourself. Two big principles. So we can say right here, the first one is, what was the first principle? Love Jehovah. And what was the second one? Love your neighbor. So L-J, L-N, right? Love Jehovah, love your neighbor. So you say, well, how is it possible that with those two, we can base any type of decision on those. Well, if you have to be, you make a decision, and you have to make it on both. Con Loving Jehovah, you have to, you have to make it according to Jehovah. Considering Jehovah. Mm -hmm. You have to go along with Jehovah, and then you have to go along with your neighbor. Yeah. So is it going to affect Jehovah, and is it going to affect your neighbor? Very good. And see, and Jesus was so confident that these two would cover everything. In verse 40, he says, on these two commandments, the whole law. How many laws did we say were given to the Israelites? 600. Over 600. He says, the whole law hangs and the prophets. So everything that was done till then is covered on these two. And it's interesting because... Not only did Jesus say it, but Paul. Paul reiterated something like that. If we go to Romans 13, it says, verse 9, For the law code, you must not commit adultery, you must not murder, you must not steal, you must not covet, and whatever other commandments there is, is summed up in this saying. You must love your neighbor as yourself. So here he says, the he rule. says all these things are summed up mm. with one of these laws that Jesus mentioned. So let's think about that for example, and let's put an example to it. Would, if you were thinking in divine principle, would you murder somebody now, what Bible principle would help you 
on not murdering somebody. Love Jehovah and love your neighbor because that Jehovah doesn't like that. Okay, and, so and that would affect your neighbor. Okay, so let's think about that. It would fall under because you're going to kill somebody. Who would it affect? The, the, the that person, that person's family, your family. So it would fall under that. So how about would you steal from somebody? That would also affect the person. So what would it fall under? Love your neighbor. So we see how that is. So for example, would somebody... If you commit adultery... That's love your neighbor. Because who would it affect? The neighbor. The neighbor, um, your, your wife, his wife, their family, your family, everybody in the neighborhood. Juanita. It would affect everybody. So now let's think about this other principle. Right here. Um, let's see. What Bible principle... Um, would you salute the flag? No, because that that's not that's a lifeless thing. The flag isn't even listening to you. So well, what's why, the purpose? Right. And Jehovah doesn't like that. Okay, he, so because he says that he is the only God, and you must not worship any okay. other gods for him. So you see, you're thinking with Bible principle, and that's a separate little Bible principle you just said that goes along with a big. Bible principle, which is love. So you wouldn't salute or or give honor or glory to something else because you just said that who only deserves it? Jehovah. Another Bible principle would be in Exodus 23, right? Mm -hmm. Exodus 23 says you don't even, you can't even make an idol, you can't do any of that. Right, and that goes back to the big boy law of love who? Jehovah. Very good, so Let's think of another one to see if this is real because we're only going based off two Bible principles yet we've covered so many just in this one. We've covered a few in this one. So let's see. Would we would we go and talk bad about our God? Oh that falls would we not go out and preach and say positive things about our God? Well, that that's, that falls into both. Because the people would be affected and they, the people would be affected and they would say, um, yeah, never mind, I don't want you to preach, I don't... Right, so we wouldn't do that because what Bible principle, love, Jehovah, would not allow us to do that. To do that, right? And, then, and you can go on and do so many things and so many other smaller Bible principle um, that talks about loving Jehovah. Can you guys think of another Bible principle that has to do with loving Jehovah? Think of a situation. watching something interesting interesting you're gonna go to a movie and the movie has a little bit of violence that's not a lot so the the screen isn't splattered with blood you're not seeing the guy hacking at somebody but it's got a little bit of violence like what in the situation. That doesn't matter. It's got a little bit of violence. There's fighting, there's punching, fight, fight, fight. there's kicking, um, there's a gunshot, somebody gets shot, but you don't see all the blood and you don't see all the nasty stuff. What Bible principle would help blood you there? Jehovah. Okay, that's the big one. But what smaller Bible principle would help you? Jehovah hates violence. Jehovah hates violence. Right? So that Bible principle would make us not want to do or see anything in violence because who hates it? Jehovah. And we, what do we do with Jehovah? We love him. But Daddy, if you put something on with punching and karate, so you... How about the Bible principle, anybody that is 
loving violence is an enemy of God. If we love Jehovah, would we are we... not going to do anything that has to do with violence. Very good. All right, so you guys kind of get the point how you can find little tiny little Bible principles that basically bring you back to one big Bible love principle. Love Jehovah and love your neighbor. So do you have to remember all Bible principles? No, you but only need to remember those two. These two big guys, right? Mm -hmm. All right, now let's take a different situation. You're at the field service meeting, okay? And here you are. You're well, actually, let's take it back. You're driving to the field service meeting, and you're already running late. You had to go and drop your kid off at school, and school was running late. You got caught behind the bus. You got around the bus, and there was a dunk truck of garbage. You got stuck behind them. So then you get over. You finally got over them, but then you got caught with a red light. And then you're on your way there, and you finally get there. You get to the kingdom hall. You run in. Open up the door, you go in the service group, and everybody looks at you. There she is again, or there he is again, the late one. And the brother is making the arrangements already. He puts you in a car group, in a car group that you don't want to go. Because the brother, the brother conducting the service meeting, he doesn't know anything anyways. He's just the brother that's put there. So... You already don't like it, but what you're going to do is, what? Afterwards, when they do the prayer, you're going to go into the parking lot, and you're going to go ahead and rearrange the little arrangement that was already made so that you can go in the car group that you really wanted to go to. <laughs> Let's go back to this real quick. You guys can recite Psalms 83. What does Psalms 83, 18 say? Love Jehovah because he is... Yeah, he is... Because you can Jehovah, say it in Spanish. Je Jehovah is el, es el altísimo, el único Dios. That's how, what it talks about. Right, very good. So what do we learn in that scripture? That God is what? That God is higher than men. Higher than anybody. He is... The Almighty. The Almighty. So, in that scripture, there's two things that are in play. His highest position to tell people or anybody what to do. Can Jehovah tell Jesus what to do? Yes. Can he tell the angels what to do? Yes. Can he tell the slave what to do? Yes. Can he tell the elders what to do in the yes. circuit overseers? He can tell anybody what to do, right? Uh, uh, but then we also learn that in that scripture, Él es el soberano. So what's involved? His sovereignty. His sovereignty. So there's two things on here involved. The right that he has to tell anybody anything and his sovereignty. Two different things. Okay. So, so if you go back to the example in the parking lot <laughs> and you change that up, what have you just done? You can disrespected Jehovah's sovereignty. That is the big point. That is the big point. The other point is that you went against his arrangements for his organization when you know that he can tell you, me, and everybody else what to do. But the bigger point is that in that small thing, his sovereignty is involved. So if you go back to Bible principle, would you really do that in the parking lot? You wouldn't, right? So that's one example. Now there's another example. Oh, oh, oh that so, brings you forward. You get in the car. Let's say you go along with it. You get in the car, but now the brother that's in charge or sister's in charge in the car, they want to go and do first return visits. They don't want to go out in the territory first. And you, you want to go out in the territory first and then do your return visits later. All right? That's the dilemma. And you can bring out so many different scriptures that shows that sister that we don't do return visits first. They're after. And you could get a whole bunch of literature and show, hey, here it is. And you can make a, such a big deal about it 
and end up going out in service first and then your return visits. What Bible principle can you think of that would help you? Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. The big one, right? Mm -hmm. That's one big one. What about a smaller one? I remember Mommy always told me that in the Bible it said that you should go along with what others say, but I don't remember what To that maintain is. what? The peace. The peace is if it's in your hands, mm. make peace oh, oh, with all Oh, and the, and the one that Paul said that he, that he was eating la carne. Right, so that's another Bible principle, no hacer tropezar. A los. Otros, o tener la conciencia de otros en mente. These are all little Bible principles, again, that bring you back to... Love your neighbor. So it's interesting how, how that works. Now, what happens from time to time is when you get baptized, right? Uh -huh. Right away, you do as much as you can to put in practice... These Bible principles, the don't you? Two, and man, do you study, and you study more, and you do, but with time, it seems like your way of thinking starts going down. And it goes down, and you start going down, and now, and you start seeing things that are not so bad. And you start thinking of um, almost doing bad things. Like, you say, well, that really didn't have that much magic in it um what that was there was just that was just some some little thing that happened but it wasn't all it wasn't magic there wasn't a witch there there wasn't but it was some some little thing or or you say well that that really wasn't pornography i mean it wasn't full-blown pornography was it? or you know what that that blood wasn't splattering everywhere just a little bit of it. I mean, it wasn't a lot. Just, or there weren't that many bad words in it. It's just, it was just a few. And they weren't the really big bad words. So your way of thinking starts going from a way of thinking that affects your... Remember? Dedication. Your heart. Your heart. It's a way of thinking that affects your... Mind. And most of the time, by the time you get here, and you are so close to crossing that line between what's right and wrong, what really happens? You have thrown away from Jehovah. And what will you eventually do? Do the wrong thing when it comes up. You will when cross you get the that chance. line. Ninety percent of the time, you will cross that line. So it's interesting that you can get from these two things the best behavior and way of thinking out of yourself so that you do not cross down in here and start thinking by laws. So when we're talking about making decisions every day, what do we want to make decisions based off of? Laws or principle? Which one? Principles. So let's take a moment to talk about our students real quick. If you have a Bible student, and here's a Bible student, and here you are, you're the teacher, okay? Now you've taught them well, and they're, um, they want to do things. How? important is it that you teach them to think with Bible principles instead of thinking with laws. So for example, they come up to you and say, hey, you know what? There, you invited me, this is a good one, you invited me to the convention. And you know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to go, and guess what? I bought myself a nice dress. Let's say it's a sister with her student. I bought myself such a nice dress. You want to see it? So the sister brings out the dress. The student brings out the dress and shows it to the sister. And it's 
right here and it's cut down here and then it's way up here it's such a beautiful dress right very short low cut what would you say um, what would you say show her the bible principles <laughs> would you you can't wear that you crazy? <laughs> no. That's what prostitutes dress like. You mm. can't wear that. <laughs> Did you say that? You no. You can't to love your neighbor because we can't hurt their way of thinking and then they'll be like, yeah, okay. I'm going. So, thinking about that, what Bible principle could you apply to that? No, I got a little bit sad on that. You know if you wear that, you're going to make somebody else fall. Is that what you would say? <laughs> so this is interesting because when you're teaching a student no. you don't want to use the Bible and Bible principle to condone or condemn something because again okay. oh, okay. if you I understand I know what you meant but I'm trying to I know what you meant that's a good Bible principle but no yeah. that's not what he meant that you wouldn't tell the Bible study that because you have to love your neighbor and that will make her not want to go to the assembly that's what he wants okay so then what would you say there is nothing I would bring a, an older sister with me and tell her to <laughs> Tell me what this so don't get me wrong, that's a good Bible principle. And the other Bible principle that las mujeres se vistan de manera ordenada, right? Okay, those are all good Bible principles. But you have, this is the point when we get to teaching the student about Bible principle. Because if you use the Bible principle to say, yes, you can do it. Or if you use the Bible principle to say, no, you can't do it. Who are you becoming? You're becoming me. Are you becoming the go-to person? So here you are, and every time something comes up, they're going to go to you, and then you're going to tell them what Jehovah says. You refer them to the Bible? And when you refer them to Bible principle, you have to be very careful whether you make it seem like you're pushing a yes because of what you feel, or you're pushing a no because of what you feel. Because in the end, they have to do what? Make their own decision. Make their own decision. And you can't be this person. You can't be the mediator. There's already a mediator. Jesus. So you're not Jesus. <laughs> That's not you. You'd rather stay right here and guide them through Bible principles so that they can think with Bible principles.